Hey everybody, it's Mike and welcome to Chip Damage and tonight we're doing something a little different. Today we're just talking about one game and we're talking about hopes and dreams. We are talking about Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Now, anyone who's seen any of my other videos on this channel, you'll know that I'm a huge fighting game fan and let's get this out of the way. There's always this giant fight of whether Smash Brothers is a fighting game, whether it belongs in the fighting game community or FGC for short and that is a huge debate even to this day. So my thoughts on it are who cares? I love fighting games, I've loved fighting games my entire life, and I like Smash Brothers. I don't really care that much whether it's in the community or not, I think the bickering is silly. I mean, they're all fun games, Smash has just been fun to me. Uh, do I look at it in the same way I look at King of Fighters or Street Fighter? No, not exactly, but hell, it can get very competitive. And you know what, it can also just be a lot of wacky fun. I think it's always a... Uh, a game that you can have the setting set to a party game or you can have it set up as a fighting game if you want. Depends on how you want to play. With that out of the way, I just kind of want to move on to the matter at hand. Uh, at the time of this recording, it was very recently shown how Kazuya Mishima from Tekken will be playing in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. He releases tomorrow. And this is a very special time for Su Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This is a very nebulous moment. Kazuya, as far as we know, is the second to last character that will be DLC in this game, as in there is only one more character to be revealed before Super Smash Bros. Ultimate will have its complete roster, ostensibly, supposedly. Of course, there could always be more seasons down the road, and I sure hope there are, but this game has gotten a lot of DLC over the last nearly three years, and it may be time for the developers to wrap up and move on to the next thing. Maybe that's not exactly what I want them to do. I could just take characters in this game forever and I'd never get tired of playing them. Um, but it may be the time for Smash to uh, ride off into the sunset as one of the most popular games in any genre ever of all time. So what I want to talk about tonight is my thoughts on the roster, the game itself, the Season 1 DLC. Was I happy with that? Was I disappointed? How I've liked the Season 2 DLC as it's gone on, as we are now currently living it and my hopes for who is the last DLC character. And I really want to hear from you guys, my commenters, who did you want next? Like, this is so fun to talk about. You see a million channels talking about this, and there's a reason. It's great to have a conversation about it. There's no need to get angry or toxic about it. I don't think most people are like that. I just think there's a few bad apples that give the whole kind of debate and uh, game scene a bad name. I love hype, I love dreams, and that's what a DLC characters in a game like this are all about. So please let me know what you think. Let me, you, me know how uh, wrong I am with my opinions, hopes, and dreams. I love hearing that. And uh, I promise not to get too mad. But yeah, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Um, if you had seen some of my prior videos, you may know that I was very lucky to go to the E3 in 2018 where this game first premiered in the United States. And I was on the line to uh, be one of the very first people in this country to play this game. It was an honor. It was a lot of fun. I got my butt kicked by my uh, friends that I brought along with me. And I could tell right away it was going to be a fun game just like the prior Smash games. Uh, I had played Smash games since the N64 and I enjoyed them. But... You know, there was that moment with Smash Brothers Ultimate, that trailer that said everyone is here, and that that was just spectacular. Um, to bring together all these franchises, and you know, some people don't, I think, realize how special that is. Like, there's plenty of online games and mods, like Mugen or Mugen, however you say, it, where like you know you can have Goku fight Tom Hanks or whatever. But what I think the magic of Smash Brothers is that is that um, Masahiro Sakura, the director of the game goes around to other game developers, speaks with other game developers behind the scenes and gets their support. Like there's something special about like the officialness of Smash Brothers that like Hideo Kojima or you know the creators of Sonic or even the guys over at Konami, uh, they get together, they shake hands with Sakurai and they say, hey, put our character in our, our, uh, your game or you can use our character. Like that, that's great because, you know, I grew up during the times of uh, the console wars and we're still in console wars between Microsoft and PlayStation and Nintendo. No matter what they say, they all say they're trying to do different things. <laughs> you know what? They're all sold in stores on the same, the same stores on the same shelves. They're all trying to compete. So like this goodwill that's going behind the scenes for this one game is just, it's really something magical. You know, it's not something that in many other forms of media that you see, like competing companies getting together. I mean... And that's what Smash Brothers is. It's a get-together of video game legends. If you kind of get in Smash, it's kind of like 
you're one of the animals that get on the ark. Like, you will be remembered, you will survive, because this game and its sequels and its prequels will be played forever. People still play the N64 Smash to this day. Melee, even Wii U and uh, Smash 4 uh, and uh, Brawl are still played to this day, um, even with Ultimate's release. Like, but Ultimate was particularly special to bring all the best stages from those prior games and all of the characters and then some. And I think that was fantastic. And speaking of characters, let's get to what we wanted to uh, kind of talk about here. I mean, I am very forgiving on Smash with the characters they choose because, you know, growing up with the first two games, uh, 64 and Melee, you know, it was a Nintendo joint, strictly, right? I mean, I love all video game systems, but I wasn't a diehard Nintendo kid uh, growing up. I liked Nintendo games, and I thought it was awesome to see Donkey Kong and, you know, Mario and Link and Samus beat on each other. But when that third game came out, when Brawl came out, I got my wish right off the bat. When Solid Snake and then very quickly Sonic were announced as third-party characters, I was pissed because that meant I had to buy a Wii. I didn't have a Wii at the moment, but I'm like, oh, I get to be Sonic and beat up Mario or be Snake and beat up whoever I want. Like, <laughs> Sonic and Metal Gear are like my favorite video game franchises, and I got them right off the bat together. And that, so <laughs> anyone after that was just a bonus. And then with Smash 4, I got my next favorite video game franchises put in. That, you know, put me over the moon. That was Cloud and Bayonetta. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Like, yeah, that's it. That's as good as it gets. I mean, it was sad that Snake wasn't in Smash 4, but hey, you know, I can still go back and play the Wii one. But then Ultimate comes out, and with the drop of Snake, with in that trailer where he shows up and says, everyone is here. Like, the fact that I could have <laughs> Cloud, Sonic, Snake, Bayonetta, all in the same game with fantastic Nintendo characters. Like, I'm a huge Pokemon fan. I'm a huge Mario fan. I'm a very big Donkey Kong fan. Like, them just all beating on each other, and, like, now they're all going to be together. This is a greatest hit. This can't get any better. And you know what? It did. The game plays great. Like, Ultimate is a fantastic game. And just the idea that I can be, like, Pac-Man and punch, I don't know, Bayonetta in the face, or <laughs> it always comes back to how weird that is. Um, and... With Ultimate doing DLC, like, that was incredible. Like, oh, even more characters? I think there was a 74-character base roster. Um, the first DLC character that no one ever talks about was the Piranha Plant for free. It was, like, came out about a month after the game was released as a free download for if you got it quick enough. And I'm like, okay, sure, Piranha Plant's not really a character. He's, like, a thing. Like, it's, like, a just an object almost, like a hazard. But it was, like, a funny little free thing. I'm like, okay, cool, something wacky to play. As part of the fun in Smash Brothers is the wackiness. And then everyone remembers that way. If you were, if you had Smash Ultimate for that first like DLC character announcement, like well after the announcement, because the first character announced was Joker from Persona at the Game Awards, and that just that everyone just exploded at the uh, I believe that was the 2018 Game Awards. Like no one saw that coming. A PlayStation character like Persona Five it was is very associated with the PlayStation. I mean, some of the characters in Smash are. I mean, when you think about it, now that we have. Cloud, Kazuya, and Snake in Smash Brothers. It has more. It has more what feels like Sony representation than the PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale ever had. But anyway, the four month wait from Joker is a uh, reveal to his release in that April, that following April, was intense. And you know that was he was a great addition, great music. Persona Four, by the way, has my, like some of my favorite video game music of all time. They all have great music, but I love the poppy stuff in Persona Four. And then they did the double whammy D three with the reveal of uh, the Dragon Quest hero, which I'm not a huge Dragon Quest fan. Not that um, I dislike it, I just haven't had the time to get into it. I'm very much looking forward to kind of diving into that series in the near future, but I need to like clear my schedule. Like how many, <laughs> like those are 100 hour games and how often does that come around? How much that free time does that come around in uh, you know adult life? But I'm looking forward to it. But I'm like, yeah, cool. For all the Dragon Quest fans out there, that's good for them. And at the end of the same presentation, they showed off Banjo-Kazooie. Um, Banjo Kazooie, obviously being a huge fan like favorite, like one that people had been dying for, but owned by Microsoft, and that's what really shocked me. Like Banjo Kazooie themselves, very cool, but the idea that Nintendo and Microsoft really had like a handshake deal <laughs> to uh, you know allow that to happen, like that would never happen during the Xbox GameCube days or the 360 Wii days, no. But now, like, Sakurai and that charm, or, you know, maybe some of that Nintendo money boosting up Xbox's image, allowed Banjo and Kazooie to finally duke it out with Donkey Kong. You know, like, that's so cool. And then, later on, I got 
Like, w- everyone got wind of SNK putting a character into Smash Brothers. And it was either going to be How Maru, because Samurai Showdown 2019 was had just released, or it was going to be Terry Bogart. And then they showed that amazing 24-bit Neo Geo trailer where it ended up being my boy, Terry Bogart. I was over the moon. I thought that I had, uh, in years prior, really gotten into KOF. And as you guys have seen from some of my prior videos... Terry is my boy, KOF 98, uh, you know, KOF 13, 2002. I was really into those games to see Terry get in that game. SNK to get mainstream recognition. Like, you know, in, here in the U.S., uh, KOF is not a huge fighting game franchise. It's on the up and up, but it's not huge. It's more popular in South America and Southeast Asia. And to see that character get the big screen or like, you know, the big U.S. push that he deserves was amazing. Yeah, some people were salty. Forget them. And the fact that he was great to play as, like Ryu and Ken, I love my Capcom fighters. But I feel like Terry was kind of molded into Smash better. He played so good. He was snappy. He was quick. He was scrappy. I got Buster Wolf in Smash Brothers. I got my main forever. Um, And the fact that he turns the face characters automatically because I'm handicapped because I'm used to to doing that in real fighting games, not real traditional fighting games as opposed to Smash. But Terry, I'm like, man, this is such a great year. And then, of course, the infamous uh, January Direct um, where of 2020 where uh, Byleth from Fire Emblem was revealed. Yeah, I wasn't thrilled on that. Fire Emblem's not my thing, so let's move on. I don't want to get too salty, but I know I'm happy for you Fire Emblem fans. And then we had to wait quite a while for... Um, the next uh, season two to begin for Smash Brothers. And we got Min Min from ARMS announced ahead of time. Like it was announced that a character from ARMS was gonna be in it. I think that was to soften the blow because like, I know it sold like 2 million copies, I think, but like no one I know is like a diehard ARMS fan. One or two people out there. I have a friend that really enjoys ARMS, but like I played ARMS for a solid hour. I'm like, eh, it's not for me. I mean, the, the colors really pop and the music's good, but you know, so like, the one thing I will say when Min Min was announced, I'm like, oh, it'll add some variety smash. No one will play like that. And I was right. She's a unique character. I, not my type of character. Don't really care for the game. But the variety was nice. I wasn't mad at that. I mean, it's a new Nintendo IP. Good for them. The next one did make me mad. It was another Microsoft rep. Um, yes, I am, uh, you know, getting up there in years. So when I saw that Minecraft Steve was going to be in Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> Like, you don't belong here. You, you you are standing shoulder to shoulder with legends. I don't care how many copies you sell. Um, but, you know, for, for the, the people who are really into my, uh, Minecraft, you know, particularly the younger generation, I've seen some pretty amazing things made in Minecraft. And yet again, it's really a Microsoft-owned character. So you had two Microsoft reps. And at the time, you had, like I said, Cloud and Snake and Smash. So it really did feel like in a weird way, Xbox versus Nintendo versus Smash. So that's the only good thing I could say about that Minecraft inclusion. Um, I actually turned the presentation off the second that I realized it was a Minecraft character. I'm like, okay, let's move on. But hey, happy for you Minecraft Steve fans out there. And then, you know, not too thrilled on the season. I'm like, okay, they're just kind of throwing some random characters in there for the sake of variety. They're cool, good for them. But like, I'm never going to be surprised again. And then at the 2020 Game Awards... Sephiroth? Come on. Come on. The JRPG villain. I don't care what your favorite Final Fantasy set, uh, Final Fantasy game is, what your favorite JRPG is, or really your favorite RPG. Final, like Sephiroth is the JRPG villain. To generations of fans, when you think of like what a JRPG villain is, it's like Sephiroth or like, you know, some gorgeous man, silver hair, like th- those, that's a template for villains since then. And you know, that theme, like Sephiroth's theme is probably the most famous theme along with like, mm, no, I don't really, I can't think of many more that surpass one wind angel in terms of the video game sphere as a villain's theme being so popular. Like up there with the main theme of the game as one of the most iconic video game songs. So like Sephiroth being in there, Cloud and Sephiroth, the JRPG hero and villain, of a certain era in my mind, like just being able to go at it, all is forgiven. Everyone else can be from Minecraft after that. And I, I, that was a, that was a shot. And we got more music. Like another thing about Smash is it's an arc of music. The soundtrack on Smash is, it's ridiculous. Uh, just the fact that it's all like preserved in this one game. That's what I love about it. I'm a game collector. You guys all know this. And I feel like Smash collects character stages and music and that it's just like a beautiful ensemble. And just to have more FF7 music. Not much more. It was like nine more songs. But they were amazing remixes. 
And, you know, you go a few months later and, you know, you get Pyrrha and Mithra. And that was uh, incredible because Xenosaga or the Xeno games in general, you know, we had um, Shulk, but don't get enough, like, credit. Like, they are first-party Nintendo games now. Like, they are more uh, owned by Nintendo than Kirby is, which is a second-party thing. Monolith, Monolith Soft is fully owned by Nintendo. They helped to make Breath of the Wild. And I love those games. I, I think in many ways, those are my favorite Nintendo RPGs. Like, Fire Emblem was never my thing. So to see, you know, Zen the Xeno series get some more love from Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which is a great game, I thought that was fantastic, and the character plays amazingly. You know, all the waifu jokes aside, she looks cool, plays cool, like I, and is pretty unique. Couldn't ask for more than that. So here we are, finally, halfway through 2021, and at E3, kind of a downer E3 in many ways. Nintendo opens up with kind of, it was a very odd feeling. They open up with Kazuya Mishima and Smash, and it's like. I, I, you can kind of feel the wave of the energy in the world, right? You can kind of feel the internet. And I myself did not grow up playing a lot of Tekken. I was Soul Calibur, I was Dead or Alive, I was a Virtua Fighter. Strangely, I just like kind of missed Tekken. Like I played it a bit, but in the last five years, I've really gotten attached to Tekken 7. I love the game, I think it's fantastic. Um, I think it's a huge, beautiful, technical fighting game. So it was great to see, for me, Kazuya get in it. He is my main, I guess I'm biased. He, I ended up loving Kazuya. But um, it fits. Namco Bandai is one of the uh, de main developers or the main developer behind Smash Brothers. And the only character they really have to show for it uh, to represent themselves is Pac-Man, right? So, you know, it made sense. After watching the presentation, he looks like one of the most detailed and varied characters in there. Like 10 hit combos, eye lasers, you know, a rage mode. I think he's massaged in very well. And for those of you who don't agree, who think he's just like the other fighting game characters, he's not a Shota, by the way. I've seen those videos. It's not what a Shoto is. Think of it this way. Street Fighter is kind of the preeminent 2D fighter, but Tekken is kind of the preeminent 3D fighter, and they are worlds apart. As different of from Smashes from a traditional 2D fighter, so is 3D fighters from 2D fighters, if you're not familiar. And Tekken, though, while not the first, is the most prominent and the highest selling video fighting game series um, not individual title, that title uh, fighting game, if you want to count it, goes to Smash Bros. Ultimate, but it's the highest selling fighting game series out there. It definitely deserves it. It did wonders for the 3D fighting game genre. It kind of spawned like my favorite 3D fighting game series, which is Soul Calibur. It had rivals that were amazing with Virtua Fighter and Dead or Alive. It all kind of like circled around Tekken in many ways. And um, to, if you're going to pick a character from it, I would suggest Kazuya. Some people say Heihachi, who's kind of like a more of a mascot in my mind. Like, yeah, everyone knows Heihachi, but he had his time to shine in Soul Calibur 2, my favorite 3D fighting game of all time. And, you know, he doesn't have, like Sakurai said, maybe the varied moveset that Kazuya had because he can't turn into a devil who wears a stylish suit. And then you have Jin, but <clears throat> uh, the latest game, Tekken 7, kind of focused more on Kazuya. And let's be honest, like, let's remember... Kazuya was the first hero of Tekken. Tekken 1, Jin wasn't around, and Tekken 2, it was Kazuya. And he kind of became a villain and then an anti-hero. He's kind of had like the longest journey. Um, you know, many, <laughs> Jin has had this journey too, but like this complete, you know, 180 is all, it has started with Kazuya. He is Tekken, he was in Tekken from the beginning. He'll be in it for years to come. And he, you know, he's my favorite. He's my man. So like I said, I'm biased. So yeah. My thoughts on Kazuya, I'm glad you're in there. But that brings us to the meat of this video. Who's next? Who's last? Well, with the, uh, yeah, it's not 100%, but with Kazuya's announcement, one of my picks got kind of deconfirmed by being a me outfit. You know where I'm going with this. It's my boy Dante. Yeah, you know, call me an edgelord. But Dante, <laughs> he is kind of the bastion, the paradigm of um, 3D action games, if you want to call them uh, Character action games, um, I, I generally just call them third person action games, hack and slashes, which I kind of attribute more to Dynasty Wars, but regardless, you know, combo based stylish action, Ninja Gaiden Bayonetta, um, Dante, D Devil May Cry kind of started that genre all the way back in 2001 and spawned competitors like the reboot of Ninja Gaiden and obviously the creator Hideki Kamiya went on to go on to make Bayonetta and I thought Dante deserved a spot. But Capcom had three reps already with Ryu, Ken, and Mega Man, who I love. So I didn't, I didn't know if that was possible. It looks like it wasn't. But I'm glad he's getting 
some recognition as a me costume. Like, he's on the arc in a way. Um, man, it would have been cool to have Dante vs. Bayonetta, though. Like, come on, please. Just, I wish. I mean, when this season started, I had some big dreams, man. Like, if you had to ask me, it would have been, like, Dante, Ryu Hayabusa. Like, yes, Ryu Hayabusa belongs there. He's both a Nintendo and Xbox icon. So, you know, and that uh, his trilogy, the Sigma trilogy, was just recently re-released. And come on, Dante vs. Ryu Hayabusa. Like, that would have been amazing. Um... I would have said like, hey, what a surprise like Crash Bandicoot would have been. I'm not, I don't think Crash would have had the most fun moveset. Like what does he do, spin and jump? But you know, um, he is he is to a generation of fans, the face of PlayStation and kind of still is like their mascot. Uh, I wanted Dr. Air Robotnik just because every um, main hero, you know, you're, you're, you got your Mario, your Bowser, you got your Ganon and your Link and uh, you got Cloud and Sephiroth. I'm mean, like, who's another massive villain that this roster is missing, and it's Dr. Eggman. You gotta imagine, like, he is, next to Bowser, the most famous video game villain of all time, especially now with the movie out. Like, I would have taken a Jim Carrey variant costume, too. Um, so I was hoping for Eggman, Dante, Ryu, maybe, I don't know, Crash, like I said. Uh, of course, call it stupid. Um, I never wanted, like, the Doom guy or anything like that. I did want Master Chief. If you want, like, they already have their... You know they're already in bed with Microsoft with uh, Minecraft Steve and Banjo. Go all the go all the way. Make it legendary. Make it Master Chief. Master Chief does more than just sh like shoot guns and grenades. Like and you can really mix it up with that arsenal. Like Halo has some amazing weaponry. The fact that uh, Master Chief is a superhuman. Like imagine almost like a Samus like character, but like varying weapons. Like SWAT. Like almost like Snake, just pulling random weapons. Like I thought that'd be so cool. Like come on to have. In, in many ways, like Mario versus Master Chief versus Snake, you would literally have like the embodiments of PlayStation and Mar uh, Nintendo and Xbox going at it in many people's eyes. And man, that would have just been sick. Um, I don't know who they can possibly end this with. This, this has been an incredible rollout of characters. I mean, I believe at the end of the day, we're going to have 86, 87 characters. That's, that's phenomenal. Whether or not you like the gameplay of the game, just like... Look at this roster. This is insane. The fact that Ridley from Metroid is sitting next to Simon Belmont, who's not too far away from Steve from Minecraft, who is directly next to Sephiroth. Like, you, this is a dream. And God, I just hope it's not, like, if it's like, I love Pokemon to death, but if it's a Pokemon, I'll be upset. If it's a Fire Emblem character, um, forget everything I just said and I don't want I don't want it. If it's a Monster Hunter, if it's just a character named Monster Hunter, like in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, I don't want that. No shade on any of those franchises, but, like, I will be happy as long as it's not a Pokemon, a Monster Hunter, or a Fire Emblem character. Like, I'll be good. Um, will, it, will it be, like, the Waluigi, like everyone always wanted? Like, you know, Nintendo's IP. I mean, sure, why not? I'm a tall, lanky guy. I've, I've dressed as Waluigi before. But, uh... What, who do you guys want? Who do you want to see? Who do you not want to see? But I, it, it, I, I think in my heart of hearts, Sakurai is a showman. And sure, maybe Byleth wasn't the best choice. Maybe Nintendo does make the pick of who goes out there when. But, you know, Nintendo, I don't, I don't want this game to go out on a whimper. Like, eh, like it was okay. Even if it's, you know what? I, even if it's terrible, maybe that's better than if it's just okay. Like if it's just like, eh, all right, that makes sense. Like that's the worst. If it's not memorable, I either want this to be amazing or the worst. Um, I'm hoping for one, but I'll take like memorable bad, you know? So yeah, I love this game. I'm excited to see who this last character, if it's going to be, maybe there'll be a season three. That's what I really hope for in my heart of hearts. But if this is the last season, let them go out with a bang. And I can't wait to try, try Kazuya tomorrow. I'll be trying him first thing in the morning. And uh, I'll also be putting on that sad Dante costume just to remind myself that, hey, he wasn't totally forgotten. But I've rambled on long enough. Yet again, let me, guy, let me know your thoughts, guys on who you want, who you don't want, what you've thought of the rollout of characters, what you think of Smash, of course, what you think the next game is going to be like in however many years that comes out. I want to know because this is a special nebulous time where we have one more shot to get the character that we really want. And I think we should take note of this. Take note of this time where you have one more shot to get the character that you really wanted, unless it's Dante or Shantae. So, yes, thank you for joining me. This is Chip Damage. My name is Mike, and have a great night. Take care of yourselves.